This is my sixth episode in my series on my insights of giving a TEDx talk. And I think I have to wrap up the series because it's now probably longer than the actual talk itself. Today, how to give a TEDx talk. Welcome to Every Day A New Thought. I'm Thor Chalgren. I am sharing my experiences in having given a TEDx talk at TEDx Anchorage 2023. And I want to give a shout out to the entire team. They are so amazing to work with. And I'm so grateful and feel so blessed to have worked with so many amazing people who are talented in everything that they do. And I'm, I just feel over the moon in terms of the experience and, and grateful to have worked with them. So today I've talked up to this point, I've talked about how do you get to the day of giving the talk? Today, I'm going to talk about the day of. And look, there are probably lots of different ways that you can give a talk. I'm simply going to share what worked for me leading up to the day of the talk. First, you're going to practice a lot. In my case, I decided that once this, the talk was written somewhere in, I'd say probably December-ish when it had to be locked, that was our deadline to them where they said, okay, as of this date, no more changes. As of that date, I started tracking in my notebook how many times I practiced the talk. And it was by the time I got onto the stage, I'd given that talk over 200 times. Now, not every single time was at the normal pace that I'd be giving it at, which was around a 16 minute pace. Sometimes I would just do it super fast in my head just to, to s cement those words in. So I might have, and some of those might have been like, nine, 10 minute pace, but basically 200 times is how many times I did it. My goal was to get to 100 times before their deadline. And they had given us a deadline of by the end of January, I think we had to be off book, meaning it had to be completely memorized. And this is for an event that was February 18. So I knew for me, my comfort level of feeling like I wouldn't be stressed about it. If the if they were saying that we had to have it be off book by end of January, I said by mid-January, I want to have given it at least a hundred times because I don't know why, but I thought probably by then I, I'd know it pretty well. So where did I practice? Pretty much everywhere. <laughs> I practice allowed all the time. I practiced in private when I was doing the dishes, when I was driving, when I was at the gym. I would, uh, when I was brushing my teeth, I would just start, you know, uh, giving my talk and just practicing it over and over and over. And like I said, I tracked every single time I did it. I wrote down how long the version was, what the circumstances were. There were probably some days when I did it seven or eight times and that's, you know, a 15 minute talk. So I probably, there were days when I spent two hours giving that talk, um, my own personal experience was somewhere around a hundred times was when I did it for the first time all the way through from memory. And that was, I actually have that recorded. I was recording it on my little um, memo, voice memo app on my phone. And when I got to the end of the talk and I got all the way through, I, you know, did a little expletive, which is because I was so excited to have gotten through it. Now, People, other people might get through it faster than that. But for me, that was around, maybe it was like 95 times or something. It was when I got all the way through without forgetting anything. So, but that's just me. So first is you're going to practice that full script. And in my case, there was many different ways I practiced it. One was I would go all the way through. And then there were times when I would just practice chunks of it. Like in my mind, as I got to eventually the final version of the script, there were like three five minute sections. So sometimes what I would do is I just run that five minute section, then another five minute section, and then the third. And that was another way that I could do it. But you may break it down into chunks. I did try putting it on note cards and that didn't really make a huge difference for me. Um, I will say one insight is that stories obviously are easy to remember. One of the things I discovered was that the first third of my talk didn't have as many stories. The second two thirds did. 
And what I realized as I got to the end of the experience is if I was likely to sort of forget anything or feel less than confident, it was usually in that first section. And I think it was because that's the section of the talk where I was introducing some of the big picture ideas and themes. And it was, while there were stories, it was less about the story. So I think, I don't know, for me, maybe that's why that part felt like I was less on sure footing. Um, part of the repetition of why you're doing this so many times is that you're going to discover places where you might forget something. So I would find for me, if I'm like, gosh, I always seem to trip on that one part. This way I could develop tricks or, or ways to remember, okay, the, here's what comes next and here's why it comes next. So that was helpful for me. I also did some prep prep work, assuming that I might have to advance my own slides. As it turns out, we didn't need to. The event organizers decided that they were going to do that. And honestly, I was happy with that because I had so much to think about. And I knew that once I got on stage and I was going to be in front of 100 people, I didn't want the added pressure of having to, to do that. I also did for me something that I... I would recommend, and this I maybe I'll talk about this in another episode down the road. Was I figured out I blocked my talk where I knew things on the right of me were thematic areas and things on the left of me were thematic areas. And I, I think I will go into that in another episode, and I'll make sure it's linked in this one when I do down the road do that. But that was also another way that I practiced it was I could think about like the things that were meaningful to me would be on a certain area of the stage and then other things would be on a different area. And that kind of helped me think about how to memorize it. So the day of the event the, and the day before, I think I only did it in my head. I didn't do it out loud. Um, we had a rehearsal on Thursday. So two days before the event where we got to hear each other's talks. And I'll tell you, that was one of the highlights for me because I, I sat there and listened to everyone else's talk and I was just in awe of what they did and, and the, the ideas that they were sharing. And I just, I think I, I probably cried because it was just, you know, you, you work on something for six months and you get to this place and I was so grateful to be there. And then when I heard everybody else, I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so grateful to be with this amazing group of people who are sharing all these things that they're so passionate about, so personal, you know, things that they were so deep about them that they were willing to share with an audience because they had that passion for that idea. It was just incredible. So that was Thursday. Friday, we had a dress rehearsal where we went through the cues of where we were going to be on the stage and all of that. We, we did have a floor monitor, a confidence monitor that had our transcript on it. And they mostly put that there, I think, so that in case we ever got lost in the talk that we could glance down on it. I knew for me, I didn't, I didn't want to depend on it for sure, because I thought, gosh, if I end up looking at it and, and reading from it, it's not going to be what I want. So I think there was only one point where I glanced down at it just to remind myself, oh yeah, I'm here. And it, it's mostly just because the, the nerves of being in, in that moment, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming. So but not every talk that you have will have one. Some events may only have the slides there so you can see where you are. But it, so that's going to vary. This event had it for the transcript. Worked great. I thought it was helpful to me and I think some of the other speakers. Um, on event day, our event was on a Saturday. The event began at 4.30. I was the first speaker, <laughs> which is a little bit, a little bit intimidating to be the person that's going out first. But it was great because... I went out, I think around 4.45 or so. I was happy to be done. As you can imagine, like once you give your talk, you don't have to be nervous about it. You can enjoy the rest of the event. And that's what I did. What I did preparing for that was I did meditation before. So I did a lot of visualization work of visualizing myself being relaxed before I went on stage. Because that's the one place I knew that I would be a little bit nervous was standing there ready to go on and hearing my name called. So I, I really visualized being calm, being relaxed, being 
excited in a good way before I went on stage. And, and then the other thing that I did, and I talked about this idea in a previous episode of, I imagined that, that my speech was already given. It was already done. It was already complete. In the quantum field, that speech is out there already. And I imagined that it was down there on that stage waiting for me to come down and allow it to flow through me. So that made the stage feel less intimidating to me because I felt like it was a place where the perfect realization of my talk already lived and it was down on that stage. And I, I, it just was helpful to me to think of it that way. So how did it go, you may ask? Well, I thought, I think it went well. I, there was only one small part that I think that I bobbled, but honestly, I don't even know now that I think about it, I don't even know where it was. It was probably in the first third, but I don't think it was something that the audience would know. It was probably something where I knew what the memorized version was, and I said it in a different way, but honestly, not a big deal, not important at all. I know that the audience laughed a lot, it, which was my intention, and it, it went well, so I was happy about that. Did I enjoy the experience? Absolutely. <laughs> so much so that I'm already thinking about what my next TEDx talk will be. I mean, it was an amazing experience. I love that you start like with one small idea and then you have this opportunity to stand up on stage in front of, in this case, a hundred people. I absolutely loved it. And would I do it again? Yes, absolutely. As soon as possible, please. <laughs> so I just want to finish this by saying, a, again, a huge shout out to all of the amazing people at TEDx Anchorage 2023, Zach and Vincent, the leaders of this uh, event, uh, Dan, Callie, Yuki, all the people that I worked with, everyone who made us feel so comfortable, who put on this amazing event, all volunteers who just, they cared about bringing this experience to the Anchorage community and also, the people of Anchorage, just amazingly lovely. I went to Anchorage in February. <laughs> I knew it was going to be cold, but it was the the warmth of the people there just made me feel so at home. And I absolutely would recommend going to Anchorage in the winter. It's a beautiful community, amazing people. So I had a great experience. The organizers at TEDx Anchorage 2023, thank you guys. You are the best. Thanks so much for watching the show. If you enjoyed this, please hit like and also subscribe. That way, every day a new episode comes out, which is every day a new thought. You'll get that episode. Until tomorrow, thanks for watching.